My name is Allie. Welcome to Bridge Church. We are so glad that you chose to worship here today. I am our Flagstaff campus pastor. We have two campuses, Lake Havasu and Flagstaff, that we just announced Lake Havasu a couple weeks ago. And that is super exciting. We're praising God for that. And then we have three prison ministries that we tune into every week. We have 44 home churches. We have planted over 100 churches in Nepal. And I tell you those numbers not to impress you, but to tell you that the body of Christ is growing, that God's church is growing, and that we get to be a part of it, and that means you are a part of it. So thank you for being a part of it, being here, and we're so grateful for what God is doing. I want to honor our senior pastors. Can we give it up, Pastor Landon and Pastor Emily? Meryl, they are our senior pastors, and they are in Texas today ministering and speaking to some pastors out there. So they give their love. They love all of you. And if you didn't know, October is Pastor Appreciation Month, and it's not over. So if you haven't tell, told them that you love them, that you appreciate them, and what they have done allowed you to be here, and, and their yes, by them saying yes and being obedient to the call, how we are so blessed by it, Make sure that you tell them that you appreciate them, that you love them. Write them a card. Message them on Instagram. They don't know I'm doing this, okay? So don't tell them I told you to do it, but go and give them some love this week. Uh, we have been in our series, Can I Get a Witness? And we have said the old school slogan, right? God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good, and we've been in this series of being the witness, and it's been the, the month of October, and it's been so good. The first week, Pastor Landon talked about Paul, how Paul went to Athens, and he went to Ephesus, and how he spoke a different language. Remember that? And how when you witness, you speak a different language. And then I spoke on the demon-possessed man in Gadarenes, and how your witness gives you territory, and we spoke how sometimes it's easier to sit with the pigs than it is to sit with the lamb, to sit where it's comfortable than to sit with our Savior. And then we spoke, Pastor Landon spoke on John the Baptist, remember that one about the camel hair and the honey and the lessons that we learned from that. And then last week, Pastor Landon spoke on the anointing, and he spoke how your witness carries anointing, and that we don't do it without the anointing, because anointing brings power, provision, protection, and position. That is why God gives us anointing for those four things. And he mentioned it a little bit, but not every service. But a few years ago, Pastor Landon did this analogy. He was speaking on anointing. And he had Pastor Glenn, right? Pastor Glenn came up here and sat in a chair, and he was in a kiddie pool. And he took oil and poured it over Pastor Glenn from his head. And it went all the way down, and it dripped. And he was literally in a pool of oil. And then Pastor Glenn was like, great job. Give it up for Pastor Glenn. And he stood up and walked out. And those, the footsteps of his oil, they never came out of the carpet. We literally had to buy new carpet because it never came out. They were there for literally like a year because, and Pastor Landon spoke on it, when you have the anointing of God on you, it will create footsteps for people to follow because it's not you, it's not about you, but it's about the anointing and people can follow you when the anointing is on you. So if you haven't prayed for anointing over your life, over your job, over your career, over what you're doing, you need to pray for anointing. Pray for God's anointing to fall on you and drip off of you so that people see it everywhere you go. So today we get to continue this series, Can I Get a Witness? And we're a note-taking church. We take the word of God seriously. So get your Bibles out, your notes out. And I get to speak to you today on the power of worship. The power of your worship and the witness of your praise. Because your praise and worship is a witness. It is a witness to so many people. And Pastor Landon has taught on this before a few years ago. And he taught us the difference of worship and praise and how we get praise from this word and from worship. Because worship means obedience. That's why we can worship in our giving. That's why we worship when the music ends. We worship continuously throughout our lives and our days. But praise comes from gratitude. 
So praise is a place of gratitude. And because you have gratitude, that produces praise. When you don't have thanksgiving and gratefulness in your heart, then it's hard to praise. But when you have a grateful heart and you have gratitude, it's easy to praise God. It's easy to lift your hands because you say, God, you've brought me through so much. I'm so thankful for what you've done, for who you are. And I, it's easy to lift my hands. It's easy to praise when we have gratitude in our heart. In the beginning, in Genesis 1, you can turn there with me. Genesis 1, and it'll take a deep theologian to find it. God created the world. God created the world, and you may know the story of creation, where God created each day, and then he took a break. Because God created something, and then he took a praise break. He said, and it was good. He created animals, and then he said, and it was good. He separated day from night, and he said, and it was good. He made the waters, and he said, and it was good. God spoke, and then he took a break. God spoke, and then he took a break. God spoke, and then he took a break. And he didn't just take a break, but he took a praise break. Can we take a praise break in this house right now to praise God for 10 seconds? Can we do that? To thank God. He took a praise break, and he praised himself because he just did it. He literally made all this, and then he was like, yeah, good job. (laughs) Yeah, I did that. I made, oh, I mean, we, we made that. Jesus, Holy Spirit, right, all of us. We did that. He said, and it was good. He took a praise break, and he celebrated himself, and that shows us we need to celebrate ourselves sometimes because if you don't celebrate yourself, you're not teaching anybody else to celebrate you. You have to teach them how to celebrate you. God showed us how to give him praise. He showed us how to celebrate ourselves. So he took a praise break, and that shows us we need to take a praise break more often. Do you go six, seven days without taking a praise break, and then you come to church, and the pastor asks for an amen, and that's the first time you say something good all week? Is that the first time that you praise God all week or that day? We need to stop. And take a praise break. Because we say, God, I thank you for my spouse. I thank you for my home. I thank you for my car. I thank you for my job. If you have a heart of gratitude, the list goes on and on and on. And we can thank God for what he's done. And have this in a place of gratitude. We need to take a praise break every once in a while. Pastor Landon has preached this to us. And I get to preach this again to you today. And close out this series on Can I get a witness? Because I don't want you to just leave and say, that was a great series. That was a great word this month. And, you know, there was like a dove on the screen and there was this little blue card they gave us one week. But I want you to leave and I want you not just to be a witness, but be a a witness that worships, a witness that praises God, a witness that goes out and people see that you're different. I want that to be the kind of witness that you are because the Bible talks about praise. And it's so important to know how it's talked about. There are seven words in the Hebrew language that we're going to talk about today. Seven words that describe the definition of praise. Psalms 34, 1 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be on my, in my mouth. We are called to praise God all the time. We are called to praise God continually. And it's hard to do something that you don't know how to do. You can never expect to see something that you don't first teach. So we're going to teach it today. Because I like preaching. Y'all pull the preacher out of me and I say I'm a preacher girl because you guys get me excited. But I like to teach too. Because I want you to take home these applicable tools and I want you to be able to know how to praise God how to stand, and how to praise him, how the Bible speaks about it. So the first word is todah. Todah means a thanksgiving choir. That means this is with other people. And what I want you to take away from this word is that you can't do this alone. You can't do a thanksgiving choir by yourself because there's no such thing as a choir of one. So how do we come together and praise God together? One person knew it. How do we praise God together? 
church. That's how we come together. We say, it's going to be awesome. There's going to be lyrics on the screen, and there's going to be the band that comes up, and they're going to jam, and it's going to be loud, and we're going to praise God together because you can't do it alone. And the devil that has lied to you, that told you, you can live for God, and you don't need church, has held you captive for far too long. You need people. You need church. We need each other because you can't do it alone. It's also a very prideful statement because you're saying, I don't need people. I don't need to go to church. Turn to your neighbor and say, I need you. I need you. you. We cannot fulfill what God promised without coming together to worship. Because when we don't come together to worship, there's not corporate blessing, there's not corporate unity, there's not corporate harmony. But when we come together in one accord, in harmony, when we worship God together, that's when things change. When we come together as a choir, we need each other. The second word is Barak. This means to kneel in thanksgiving. Barak is to kneel in thanksgiving. If you've noticed the pattern, all these words are tied to the English word that we have, thanksgiving. So we literally need our praise and worship to be attached to thanksgiving and gratitude in our life. So we need to kneel in reverence to the Lord. We need to bow before the Lord. In Bridge Kids, we do two songs and then we do a slow song. And that slow song, the past few years, the kids have started this habit where they kneel when that third song starts. Right when it starts, they literally get on their knees and they kneel. And then when, if somebody stands up, if the song gets fast and it gets hype, then one person stands and they all stand. And they're in unity. They literally do it together. And when they kneel, you know, they may be tired. They just may want to sit on the ground because they worship for two songs. And I literally don't care because it's getting them in the habit of kneeling before God. That they're like, oh, no, mom, this is what we do. We kneel. We get on our hands and knees. We bow before the Lord. You will see Pastor Landon kneel almost every single service, every single Sunday. Because the moment that we're not kneeling before, the, before God, we are saying it's too prideful because you're saying it depends on me. I knelt today because I said, God, this is not my gifting. This is not my anointing. This is not my church. This is yours, God. Everything I have is yours. And that's why we kneel to say, God, This is yours. This is not mine. I'm submitted, and this is yours. And I'm praising God by kneeling. The third word is tequila. Tequila. And no, I did not say tequila. It's not the right. No, you're thinking it. It's not the right, the root word of tequila in Hebrew. This is tequila. Tequila is to sing a song of thanksgiving. And I love this because first, it was a choir. And you sing a song together, but now it's singular. So before it was plural, but now it's just you singing a song. You need to sing your own song to the Lord. You need to find the words inside of you where it pours out and you praise God with your own words. I am not called to be on this worship team or to sing. I'm called to be in a very large choir in the very back. But it doesn't matter. When I was in youth group, they put me on the stage, gave me a microphone, and I led worship. And I promise you, that microphone was not even turned on. There was probably not even batteries in it. Because it didn't matter because I said, I'm going to worship God no matter what. If I'm on the stage, if I'm in the front row, if I'm in the very back, I'm going to worship God. I'm going to praise. I'm going to lift my hands. It doesn't matter if your voice is good, if it's raspy. Whatever your voice sounds like, you need to find your voice. You need to find the song because when we get to heaven, The only song we're going to sing is holy is the lamb. Holy, holy, holy is the lamb. Holy is the lamb. That's going to be the number one hit in heaven. That's all we're going to sing. And what if the only time you sing it is when you get to heaven? Do you want to practice here on earth and say, God, this is my song. I'm going to find the words and sing my song. You need to find your own song. The fourth word is halah. This is where we get the word hallelujah. 
And it means to give thanks by being clamorously foolish. By being clamorously foolish. And, you know, some of you did this in worship today. Sounded like a bunch of, like, banshee women, like, ah, oh, like you're singing loud. Or maybe you shouted. Maybe you whistled. Whatever you did. If you jumped, if you danced, those really Holy Spirit people, they, like, sway and they praise the Lord. But whatever you did, I challenge you, you need to look a little more foolish. Because we need to look foolish like David. When he said, I'm the king, but I'm going to dance in the street. In my linen cloth, I'm going to dance naked before the Lord. I don't care what people think. I'm going to strip off the formalities. I'm going to strip off what people are looking at me, what they think of me. Because it doesn't matter. I would rather look foolish to you for one service than live like a fool my whole life. We need to look foolish. I challenge you, maybe you need to not care about your makeup as much. You need to let your hair down. You need to not worry what people are thinking about you. And that's why we want space. That's why we don't want a packed house because y'all are the only ones, right? Like a pastor wants a packed house, but like you don't want a packed house because you're sweaty, you're cramped up next to somebody, and you can't even lift your hands. But we want space. That's why we're doing this remodel. We want space for prayer down here. We want space for the altar where you can lift your hands, where you can worship God, where you can look a little foolish because we all need to look a little foolish. This is one of the words, the seven words to describe praise. Because when you are secure in yourself, it's attractive to other people. When you're secure and you don't care what you look like, it's a witness to other people. People see it and they admire it and they say, I'm thankful for how you worship, for how you lead. The fifth one is yada. This means to give thanks by extending your hands. To give thanks by extending your hands. So now this isn't your voice, but this is your hands. To extend your hands in praise. And, you know, often people will teach, like, when you lift your hands and both hands are lifted, that means surrendered. But it doesn't mean surrendered. It literally just means get your sinking hands up. Because this is what God is telling us to do. It's telling us to get our hands up and to praise God. In Psalms 104, which we read in the beginning, it uses four words to describe it, and yada is one of them. And in just one verse, there are four words, and some of us, we only get one praise in one week, in a whole week. Some of you, all you do is sing, but you need to lift your hands. You need to bow. You need to look foolish. We need to take it a step further and praise God. We need to show him because, yeah, no, maybe my shoulder hurts. I'm still going to praise him. Maybe I don't feel like it. I'm still going to praise him. Maybe I don't like this song. I'm still going to praise him. It doesn't matter. We extend our hands and we worship him because we have to have a corporate blessing here. When you see someone else raise your hands, you say, oh, you're raising your hands. I'm going to raise my hands too because we're in unity. We're in this together. The next word is zamar. Zamar is number six, and that is to give thanks using a musical instrument. How many are appreciative for a quality band that we have? Y'all better give some praise. Give a little thanks because I could go get somebody from the back, and I could say, here's a banjo, here's a harmonica. It's a free-for-all. Everybody just do your best. And, and we could see how that goes, but this takes time. This takes talent. This takes practice. And we want gifted people that are saying, I have a gift and I want to use it for the Lord. I want to give God glory through the gift that he has given me. We can give thanks using a musical instrument and we have space for that, which is so beautiful. The young and old, talented and gifted, our pastors don't want young or old to feel like there's not space for them on this stage, in this house, to grow and to use your gifts, but there is space for you. There is room for you and for your gifting, for your talent. There is space for you. The last word is Shabbat. Shabbat, and this is something we are familiar with. This is to give thanks in a loud tone. This is to give thanks in a loud tone and to shout it out. Can we give God a loud shout in this place? This is what that looks like. Because sometimes all I can muster up is the name of Jesus. 
All I can say is Jesus. Our worship team is going to come up here and they are going to praise and we're going to worship at the end of this service to end service today. Because I don't want you to just hear these words, but I want you to apply them. I want you to use them. And I want you to take these seven words because I want to give you practical truth that you can walk away with today. So those words that we talked about, and then we talked about Genesis 1, right? In Genesis 1, we talked how God spoke, and then he spoke a blessing. He spoke, and then there was a blessing. And if you break it down, you can get real nerdy, and you can count the numbers of words that he said in between each blessing. So you can count it down, and like the lowest was like 65, and then there was like 98, and then 100, and there's like 188. And if you count the words that are between each blessing, and then you have those numbers, and they were all different. So then, if you didn't know, we speak on average about 16,000 words a day. And that is for 14 hours a week on average for a person. And so if you have 14 hours, that's 840 minutes, that's 16,000 words a day. That is 19 words a minute that we speak. For quiet people, you are like, that is way too much. For you loud talking to people, you're like, give me more words, I need more time. Because 19 words is average. So if you take the right praise break that God took, he spoke and then he took a break and he took a praise break. If you take the right amount that he took, that would mean you are taking a praise break every nine to 10 minutes of your day. On the longest side, on the shortest side, that would mean you are taking a praise break every three to four minutes. Someone say, wow. That is a challenge. That's a challenge for me. I've gotten to the point where I'm about every two hours, I would say where I stop what I'm doing and I take a break and I take a praise break and I say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. You use one of those seven words you or seven uh, definitions of praise. You lift your hands. You bow. You sing your own song. You get to church. Because we need to not go week or go days or go hours without stopping and taking a praise break. Because God is challenging you today. Maybe you need to set an alarm for one time a day to stop and take a praise break. Maybe you need to set an alarm for twice a day. What is the challenge? Wigglesworth didn't go 15 minutes without speaking the name of Jesus, an evangelist. That was his own conviction and challenge. What is yours? How many words do you speak before you stop and give God glory? How many words do you say before you give him a praise? Because some of us are so in our heads that you will look at somebody, you will look at a friend, at a relative, and you will make them an enemy in your head because you just keep going. And the one thing they did, the one thing they did wrong, you spiral and spiral. And now that friend becomes an enemy and you won't stop until you take a praise break. But you need to take a praise break and you say, God, I give this to you. I surrender this to you.